Hello everyone. I wanted to come on today because I have been receiving a lot of everybody is um, here in this group and that you're engaging and we're really getting some great participation. And I've been getting a lot of questions about what I would come on today. I know that this is a really popular topic. I just want to make sure that everybody can hear me. I am on my headphones here. So if you could just let me know in the comments, I would love to know who's here with me. This was kind of just an impromptu thing that I decided to do, but it's also going to help me to practice for my ASCP talk next week. So I figured that um, just making sure whoever is watching, if you could just <laughs> and then I will get started. So just give me a you are here with me. So hopefully you can hear me and I'm just going to go ahead with it. So for those of you who are new to this group, I want to just introduce who I am and, and what I do. So hi friend. Yes. Can you hear me, Catherine? Hopefully that's a yes. <laughs> Great. So th for those of you who are new to this group or who aren't familiar with me and what I do, and you're like, who is this crazy girl who's just posting all of this, um, just kind of out of the box, different types of things that you might not have seen or heard about before, but that is really what I love. I love to cha challenge the status quo. Yes. Okay. You can hear me. Good. I love to challenge the status quo. I love to really explore things that are out of the box. So that is what you are going to get in this group. I am not afraid to kind of push the envelope and to just kind of speak freely about what it is that I believe in. And you can stay or you can go and either way that's fine. But I want to really start to open up a little bit more about some of the work that I do, which is evolving you know constantly and i work a lot with quantum physics and neuroscience and all of that geeky stuff to help women to transform that's really what i do so i'm going to go through a little bit about that today but for those of you who don't know me my name is dr christina fontana and i help visionary women mainly pharmacists to transform and the lower octave emotions that are holding you back and anchoring you so that you can be liberated into creating, creating a compelling future where you are accelerating the path to your big vision. Now, I know that a lot of you in this group are looking to start a business or maybe write a book. Whatever that vision is, it doesn't matter for these purposes. It does matter, you know, of course, but it's all the end product, right? So we all have want to reach. We have a vision that we want to get to way. So self-sabotage is a big topic that I talk about a lot. I get questions about a lot. And so I wanted to just come on today and address that with you. And so um, I definitely get that. I get self-sabotage. I've, I've been a, a victim to it. I've been through it. Uh, it creates a really um, disempowering cycle in, in our lives. And so I want to highlight today how you can begin to start breaking that cycle because I know that a lot of us here are interested in that. And when you do that, when you liberate that energy that you've been using or unconsciously and tying and anchoring you to the past, you're able to use that energy and transfer it to create your business, to accelerate the path to your compelling future. And that is truly what I want for each and every single one of you. So if you were here with me right now, I see people joining, let me know in the comments, give me some. Um, I am really excited topic today. So I am a pharmacist, author, transformation coach, hypnotherapist. I am a huge nerd, uh, love to study things all related to science. And like I said, quantum physics, I recently wrote a book all about this. So called embracing your light as a highly sensitive person. So I work a lot with empaths and people who are really attuned to all things with energy and transformation and healing. And a lot of the women that come to me feel stuck. So they come with this symptom of feeling frustrated and so stuck and just not knowing how to move forward in their business. So that is really where I can come in and intuitively pick out, okay, this is what I hear from your voice. This is what I can intuitively pick up on. Maybe there's a fear that they're not even aware of. 
So it could be a fear of success, a fear of failure, uh, procrastination, perfectionism, all of these mechanisms that show up physically as an external outcome all come from these internal beliefs that we have. And so that's what I'm going to dive into today is all about subconscious programming, how to begin shifting your identity and so I am extremely passionate about this and this is something that I really want to start bringing even more into this group. So just a little bit about subconscious programming. So we get programmed and we are like little sponges from birth to age seven. So you are completely subconscious at that time because your brain waves are in delta and theta wave brain state. So as you get older and as you progress through seven and above, you gradually start to develop your analytical mind. You're like a little sponge, so you're just absorbing everything from your environment, whether it's beliefs from your parents or conversations that you hear about has subconscious beliefs about not ever being good enough or being thin enough. Thoughts are energy, and so we absorb all of that, and we're like little sponges, and we wind up making meaning out of the experiences from childhood and especially if it's a repetitive traumatic belief or event that happens well high frequency gamma wave brain states that occur whenever a trauma happens that put you on high alert that um, allowing coherence and balance in your body because you're always carrying this around so you have gamma wave brain states you have this emotional trauma that you know you're this, this young person that doesn't know how to deal with this trauma or what's happening so you make meaning out of it you make it mean I'm or i need to sit down and be a good girl all of these things brain as a young child you make it mean something so what happens is that you have all of these undigested traumas in the emotional body that show up as blocks. To grow your business, you might want to be a speaker and sh you, in order to do that, you need to be seen, you need to show up and be confident, but maybe you have the subconscious programming that I'm not good enough that you've had, maybe you've been bullied, maybe you've had different experiences in your childhood that, um, to that goal so this is really how I work with women and a lot of them might not even be aware of some of these things that are stopping them and I call them blocks so a block is pretty much anything that is stopping you so resistance a block limits whatever you want to call it these are things that show up stretch yourself to that next watching conversation because it doesn't matter if you're just starting a business, if you're trying to write a book, whatever the outcome is, there's always a next level for what we're desiring in our lives. Come up because your subconscious mind is trying to protect you. So because you made meaning out of those situations and your energy is still tied to the past unconsciously, whenever you go and try to stretch yourself, these blocks come up and it's almost like your subconscious mind is like, no, life. And so what happens is that these external behaviors, procrastination, perfectionism, fear, um, just delaying in general, there's so many different blocks that can show up. And so a lot of people will just revert back to the old. You've probably thought the same thoughts, felt the same emotions and created the same behaviors unconsciously and that creates this self-sabotage cycle that I always talk about. So the way that you begin to break that is number one, by identifying it. So even if you are not conscious of it, because really the subconscious mind is 95% of everything that we do, we might not be aware of what those blocks are. Going into meditation, going into the frequency waves of theta and delta you're able to go into the operating system of, think of a computer, you're able to hack that system and a you're able to reprogram a lot of those beliefs that are holding you back. And you might be able to tune into, okay, yeah, I remember that memory of 
not being able to speak my truth or not wanting to upset someone in my external environment. And we hyper-focus on our external environment, traumas and these things that we don't want to experience that trauma again. So what happens is that you wind up creating these defense mechanisms. So if you see you commenting in, in the comments here, and just saying like, yes, I can absolutely relate. Same patterns because we are so anchored to the past. So what is required for transformation is literally deprogramming the allowing yourself to feel elevated emotions, to begin thinking new thoughts. And what happens is, you know, in, in neuroscience, Fusion, like a belief gets fused onto this receptor site and it's like hardwired. That's why they call it hard. You're hardwired because you're literally, um, you've repeated and you've thought these same thoughts. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. It's literally like glued to this neuron. So the way that you have to begin an anchor, it's literally new thoughts is by thinking new thoughts that are true to your highest self, to the, the version of you that already has. So I dive into, I know that a lot of you here are probably development and, and you've read probably dozens of different books and watched videos, but I like to get into of it because this is not, this is actual when you begin thinking new thoughts, it a new thought to this neuron. And as you keep repeating and mentally rehearsing this, that old thought just starts to literally be un unglued. <sighs> yes, separating the two. Get that, Catherine. Thank you for sharing so vulnerably about that. And yeah, we make meaning out of those things. So if something failed or didn't work, we make it mean like, I am a failure. Sometimes that you'll kind of put it on your It has to go somewhere. So either the energy goes in and you blame yourself or you blame others. So the way that you begin to let go of this energy is to go within to actually feel the feelings because there's probably some kind of uh, stuck emotion in your emotional body surrounding this event. And so what happens comes in your brain, you, you brainwave state and your mind it's like a mental split so you have the memory of the emotions so the way that you heal and digest this emotion and this is in my book too Catherine is you actually can go and just just put your hand on your heart and just feel into it and say what is what is it that I was feeling at that time and I do a lot of this in my individual coaching with helping women to go back as an observer and to just really witness with compassion what was happening at that time from like a bird's eye view. Because when we're not digesting those emotional, the emotional traumas in the body, that's what's coming up every time you try to go and create or get to that next level in your business or whatever that thing is. This can, and it's not just in business, they could, this could be for anything, um, this work. So if you were trying to lose weight or if one of your everything in their their power exercise blah 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 they might have they might have subconscious blocks that are preventing them from truth and having both parts of them on board because especially with weight a lot of it is protection so your body is that's another level of resistance so what i've found in the nine years of doing this type of work is that that is how it shows up. First, it's an energetic pattern that just keeps getting programmed over and then it shows up as physical weight or a physical disease. And this has been well documented in, um, in the research. And I think that it's, it's so important to realize that you can change, that you are not stuck where you are, that you can begin to transform, you can elevate to your next level and let your subconscious mind know, hey, it's safe. That was something in the past. Problem. Reality, when we're so anchored to the old emotions and the old thoughts, 
it prevents us from truly moving forward and creating a new reality. So what I do with women is helping you liberate that creative energy because right now there are things that you might not be aware of that are stopping you. They're preventing you from truly expressing your divine essence and who you came here to be. So the way that I see it is like a hose, right? So if there's a kink in a hose and there's all these blocks, it the, the energy can't flow freely. So when you allow yourself to digest these emotions, to calm your nerves, allow yourself to have this smooth flow of energy, you're not you're not anchored to the past. You're creating your compelling future. And such an incredible science to all of this. Um, I'm just looking at my notes because I want to make sure. Um, another thing that I think is really important to, to think about is that we get addicted to these emotions. So there is a chemical rush of energy. Think about, you know, if you, whenever you go shopping or if you buy something new, it's like, oh, there's that rush, the dopamine hit that happens. Well, the same thing happens with these emotions that we feel on a weekly basis. So typically we feel these limited emotions of, of survival, so, you know, anxiety, or, um, anger, and you just, you are that person and there's no judgment where you're like, wow, you know, it doesn't matter who it is. Like, I'll be honest, my and I, I have a lot of compassion because I know where he's at, but he is always angry at someone. It doesn't matter if it's me. If I'm not in his life, he'll be angry at someone else. So body consciously is addicted to the chemical of anger because it's an unprocessed emotion from childhood. So if you're not allowing yourself to just tune in and allow yourself to process and digest these emotions, what do we do? We develop want to feel the feelings. We go shopping, we overeat, we do all of these things to distract us from feeling the feeling of really what is that und undigested trauma? What is that guilt that I'm not dealing with? And we become addicted to it. And if you think about, I used, I was just doing a, um, I was doing a podcast today and I used this example about, you know, I'm addicted to coffee. I'll admit it. I love coffee. But if I don't have my cup in the morning, I feel it. It's the same thing with these chemicals. It's you're literally addicted to feeling guilty. And so when I, and then your, your body's looking like, oh, wow, like where's, where's the chemical? I need that rush again. So say like, you know, everybody's a pharmacist in this group, say that you, you're you at five milligrams or, you know, you're at a hundred milligrams and you're used to feeling a hundred milligrams of guilt. And then you all of a sudden drop to five, your body's like, whoa, what happened? That is documented. That is something that's been proven and, and shown that because of these, used to these lower octave emotions that are held in the body. So shame, guilt, fear, anxiety these are the things that we're probably feeling on a weekly mine is unworthiness and so i'm constantly shifting and evolving and going in within myself and feeling the pain of that because there are different layers of it it's never transformation is not actually go within to heal within and to know that it's okay uh, i don't know why this you know I the, the worst that you go down that shame spiral, but when you allow yourself to be the observer in meditation, to look at yourself with compassion, it's so much easier to transcend those emotions, to begin liberating the energy from those emotions to use in your business or whatever your goal is. So I think that's really important to, to remember. Um, and the other thing too is to think about I'm unanchoring myself from this from this old way of being these old thoughts these old emotions these old behaviors how do I begin visualizing how would that person be in the future how would that higher act would I how would I be with money would I would I be very generous would I be very giving like really getting clear as that future because the old way of thinking 
oh, my money has to come and then I'll be happy. So cause and effect, when in reality, it's the opposite. So you have to generate the feelings of abundance and wealth in order to be that future self that is already in so you are generating from the inside instead of being out of your environment and this has been shown in epigenetics you know people used to think that our genes cause of disease and now the research has shown that your environment internal and your internal environment create and can turn on and turn off certain genes and that influences your health. So all of this ties in to say that you can actually change and begin deprogramming a lot of these things that are holding you back. And that is what I love to empower people with because I know what that's like. I know what it's like to be swirling and not really knowing what to do, but there are tools out there to help you to release these blocks to that you are creating the future of your dreams and i am living proof of it you know i i always tell my story i was on a totally different frequency years ago and um you know was a child mental abuse i was a victim i got bullied I got thrown out of my house. I had eating disorders, anxiety, you name it. So I went from that state, used these tools, and you know, it wasn't overnight, but it was they were gradual changes that helped me digest and release a lot of that old stuck energy that was in my subconscious, my emotional body, so that I could build what I have now. And there is so much more that I'm going to experience. And just like you, whoever is watching, there is a next level. There is a highest version of you embodied in your queen essence, in, in the, the divine essence of who you came here to be. There are certain thoughts you would think. There, were certain, there are going to be certain feelings that you're going to feel elevated, joy, gratitude. That is possible for you. And it's okay if you feel some of those lower emotions, but don't attach meaning to it. That's where you can go in and, and just peel back the layers of this resistance or these blocks. And I've had this question um, posed to me before. If you know what the block is, if you can kind of go into meditation, uh, usually it takes me about like 10 to 15 minutes to get into that like really relaxed state. You know, I'm not associated internal and really, you know, more internal and, and reflecting inward, you can well, that desire dropped in right now, would I be ready for it? And then you'll start to see maybe there's some fear around that or some judgment or like it was too easy or whatever your brain is making it mean and those are the blocks that are going to and the resistance that's going to start being revealed to you as you spend time with yourself as you close off that physical environment and you be you be with yourself and most people work because it's easier to go back to the old self to be quite honest so it is a process and the more that you know information the more that you can just stop yourself whenever you're wanting to go back to the old behavior and you can consciously choose your body, how you speak, how you emote, the things that you do, your habits, all of those things correspond to a certain frequency of how you're showing up because you, as a human being, we, you know, the quantum model of change shows that we are a magnetic field. So your thoughts are the electron, your, your emotions and your feelings are the magnet, and you are constantly magnetizing and drawing experiences into your life. So if you don't right now and what's showing up, okay, it's showing you contrast. Okay, it's showing you there's some block or some resistance that is preventing you from receiving that thing, whatever that is. And sometimes it shows up, like if, I've done this before where I, um, goal that I wanted for my business and I just like kind of put it out there. I, I do my process planting intention 
something showed up and it was a coach. It was somebody that could help me get Sometimes you need to be your lens and seeing the available options that are there for you. If you're resonating with in particular, or if you're like, wow, I'm, I don't know why I can't really explain, but that person, I'm really drawn to them. It's, it's a, it's not that you just kind of put intentions out in your creation so thinking about all of these different components i know that i just kind of hit you guys with a lot of just deep information here but i help my clients and it's incredible to see you know how this how this works you know people quit their jobs people are feeling more connected to their spouse. I mean, there are unlimited potentials, unlimited possibilities that happen when you do this work, when you're willing and you're committed to your transformation, to not being tied to your past and replaying those same things over and over. And over. Choose to show up, be your highest self, and it all starts with your decision and your willingness. So. Thank you so much for listening. I um, this is for um, for my talk too next week. I hope that if anybody's watching, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. And I hope that anybody who can make it will make it. I think it's what is it three eighteen? I think it's Thursday. So definitely check that out, and I will talk to you guys.